In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at another system of equations, and we're going to go and we're going to use our matrices through the TI-83 and TI-84 families of calculators to find the solution. So, I've already done a video on this. If you have not seen that one, that will go into a little bit more detail. I'm going to skip a couple of the things that I've already done. But by and large, I'm going to do the same thing. Only this time, we're going to end up with something that doesn't look right. And I chose that on purpose. So, kind of follow along, and then when we get down to the end, you'll find out that in the interpretation of the matrix, you will find an issue. And you have to, you have to make a judgment on that issue. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we have a uh, system here. We need to go ahead and put this system into a matrix. Remember that a matrix is just an array of rows and columns, and we're just putting in the coefficients of each variable. We're not putting in the variable itself, we just kind of leave those alone. And so along the top row we have 2, negative 3, 1, and 11. Along the next row we have 3, 2, negative 2, and 3. And on that final row we have negative 5, negative 12, 8, and 13. Now remember each row corresponds to one of the equations. The first three columns correspond to each variable. You'll notice that I only have x's, then y's, then z's. They're not intermixed. If they're intermixed, you've got to unintermix them and put them in an x column, a y column, and a z column. The final is called the augment, and this is where the answers will lie. And if we do this right, and, and the solution is unique, meaning it's consistent and independent, then we're going to have to go, we'll, we'll end up with something that looks like ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else in that square, and then we're going to have an x value, a y value, and a z value. If you put your x's in the middle, you're just going to uh, and your y's first, so you have you would have x's here and then y's here. Then all you do is these two would switch and y would be on top. That's it. But we'll go through the interpretation when we get there. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to input this matrix into the calculator. So I'll bring up my calculator, turn it on, and you'll see I've already done one. So I'm going to clear that. I'm going to go into, in order to get into the matrix to change them, we go to second matrix. Since we are changing our matrix, we go to edit. And then we hit enter and choose whichever one you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose A again, hit enter. Now the size, recall that the size is the number of rows by the number of columns. That means that we have three rows here because we have three rows, three equations, and four columns. And we do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter throughout. Now get down into the matrix. Again, as you hit enter through this, it's going to, uh, it's going to move or advance in the right direction. It's going to, it's going to go across each row. When it gets to the end of a row and you hit enter, it's going to jump to the next row, first column. And then it's going to go across. And then it's going to continue that process until you enter the very last entry, which is the, which is the last number in the last, or the last column in the last row. When you hit enter there, it's just going to stay put. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our values. And if you already have values in here, it will overwrite whatever value is in there. So I'll just put 2, enter, negative 3, enter. 1, enter, 11, enter. You might be saying, well, he's putting the same numbers. Uh, yeah, I, this isn't the same matrix, so be very, very careful. 3, enter, 2, enter, negative 2, enter, 3, enter. And for the final row, it's going to be negative 5. Watch this. See the one over there? And notice up here, notice I didn't, I put it at the screen, but you can't see that. <laughs> no. Notice that uh, the 1 is there, but as soon as I put in negative 5 and hit enter, it changes it. Okay, so negative 12, enter, 8, enter, 13, enter. So what you could do is you could set up some generic matrices for like 2 by 3, 3 by 4, 4 by 5, and then keep those, and then just change the one that you need to work with, rather than having to reset the size each and every time. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and double check to make sure our matrix is correct, because if it's not, the calculator will give you an answer, even if you don't like it and it's wrong. 
So that last column is 11, 3, 13, 11, 3, 13. 1, negative 2, 8, 1, negative 2, 8. Negative 3, 2, negative 12, negative 3, 2, negative 12. And then in order to see that first column, we have to scroll to the left. And so we get 2, 3, negative 5, 2, 3, negative 5. And I'll go ahead and, and satisfy our matrix, so we hit second quit. We have to quit out of there before we go do anything else. Otherwise, whatever we do will be put into that entry in the matrix. So second quit will get you back to your home screen. Hit second matrix because we're going to play with the matrix, and to do that we have to be only in the matrix menu. We want to play with it in a, ma in a math format. We want to do some calculations. Go to math. Now the one that we're looking for is RREF row reduced echelon form. Once we find that, hit enter. That's going to put RREF and open a set of parentheses. So now we have to call the matrix. In order to call the matrix, we say second matrix. Instead of editing it this time, we're going to just say name. Under names, this is how you call. When you hit enter, that matrix will be inputted. And so we just hit enter. You'll see we say RREF row reduced echelon form of matrix A. Hit enter. Ooh. So when we did this this time, we got some decimals here. Okay, well, I don't really care for decimals all that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit math. And under the math uh, menu, you'll see two fraction. If you just hit enter on that, it'll say take my answer from my, pre my previous answer. Change any of the decimals to fractions if you can. Hit enter one more time. And oh look, it changes it to fractions. So now you get a fraction form. That's awesome. Not only that, but you can see the whole matrix at once. So we were hoping for ones down the diagonal, and as we look, we get one, one. Uh-oh. We don't have a one. Okay. So we have to interpret this. So let's go ahead and write down our answer matrix. And so I wish I could keep this on top here. Uh, it's not going to let me, though. Okay, that's all right. So we're going to have 1, 0, negative 4 thirteenths, 31 thirteenths. Let's go back to here. So we have in our answer 1, 0, negative 4 thirteenths, negative 4 thirteenths, and 31 thirteenths. On the next row, we had 0, 1, and then we had negative 7 thirteenths, negative 27 thirteenths. So negative, negative 7 thirteenths, negative 27 thirteenths. And if you notice, the bottom row is just all zeros. 0, 0, 0, 0. So when we interpret this, this is what this is going to look like. We have 1x plus 0y minus 4 thirteenths z is equal to 31 thirteenths. The next row tells us that 0x plus 1y plus, uh, minus, whoop, my, oh wow, that's a big eraser. There we go. Minus 7 thirteenths z equals negative 27 thirteenths. And our last row says 0x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 0. This last row is the one that we want to pay attention to. Reason being is, when you have 0 times x, it's 0. When you have 0 times y, it's 0. When you have 0 times z, it's 0. And the last number is 0, and so 0 equals 0. The question is, when is that true? Well, it's always true. 0 is always equal to itself. So, in that case, we have a dependent, dependent system. And so what I can do is I can just go back and say, all right, well, I'll choose one of the one of the top two equations up here and say that the solution then is all x, y's, and z's such that 2x minus 3y plus z equals 11. And that's how we say state that solution. So what you have here is that at the very least, you probably have two planes that are in fact on top of one another. That's it. That's all you have. 
So since there's really no, since there's an infinite number of intersections, you have a dependent system. That's the way the calculator will put it to you. The dependent system is going to have a row with all zeros. 